Hello everyone. Welcome to the Festive Day Calendar 2022. Today is the 5th of December and here in this 12 days of video series we are deep diving into OKRs. I'm Karola Kettokari. Uh, I come from Finland, a very snowy <laughs> place here up in the northern Europe and uh, I work as the mother of lead at a Finnish company called Metalek. Um, I have my super, super cool Christmas jumper sweater on. I also have this uh, um, cool prop for my hair, but if I put this in my head, the teams will blur it out so you will be able to see it. Too bad. But actually you will uh, see it in another festive the calendar session a bit later on in December. Stay tuned. But in this season of 12 Days of Viva, it's brought to you by Viva Explorers, a bunch of MVPs who are super excited about Viva and all the things it has to offer for us. So if you want to know more about different applications, different solutions in Viva, stay tuned and watch all of our 12 days. But today we are focusing on OKRs. I love the animation on the slide. It's super, super cool. Um, so objectives and key results. Why should we care? What are they actually? And how you should, you should and you could start using OKRs in your organization? And of course, how Microsoft can help you with this. I know it's a bit of a spoiler to say it's all about Viva Explorers. So yes, Viva has to do something with this session, but the main focus in here today is the OKR framework. So let's set the scene a little bit. Um, the workplace and the way we work has gone through this like dramatic change over the last three years. Employees are changing about the, the way how they think about work. And they are thinking at top, not only about like where to work, when to work, but also why. And uh, Microsoft has this new worth it equation or Microsoft says there is this new worth it equation. Is my work really worth my time and my efforts? And the, I, it, I think the employees are looking to employers to provide a sense of purpose. And they want to be part of something bigger and see that when I do my work, it actually matters. And um, I, I think that we have all witnessed that since the remote and hybrid work became the norm, uh, employees have struggled to stay connected with their team members and they'll, they are feeling overworked under these massive workloads. And uh, on the other hand, leaders and managers also feel disconnected with their from their, their team members. And there's this like misconnection between leaders and employees. And Microsoft called this situation the productivity paranoia. I don't know why they came up with this all new cool words. So the employees are working longer days, sitting in more and more meetings every day, producing more content than ever before. But leaders, they are still concerned that is the work really getting done? And especially that are we focusing on the right things? Are we doing the right work? Are we work working to the right direction? And are we working together as a team? So um, managers need to be able to create those common goals and cleave clarity to the goals. And of course, then trust that the employees will focus on what drives the business value. It's easier said than not. For example, this one study shows that while almost every leader understands the company's strategic priorities, 
only 3rd of them could name their company's three top goals. I would be worried if my manager would know what the goals in my organization are. So even the managers don't know how their strategy turns into execution. How could then their teams or sing single employees work towards the goals? And how can all the employees feel engaged and feel liked? Um, as, you may, as you may know, I am all about employee experience. I care about the end users, the employees in the organization. And a huge part of employee well-being and satisfaction, all, the, all those things that eventually actually lead to productivity, uh, is the feeling of being meaningful. We want that our work matters. And by that, we of course mean that we want that we matter, that I do matter. And um, the nice thing is that if an employee knows the organization's mission and believes in the mission, almost every employee is inspired by their, by their work. So when you can connect employees to the company or team mission and goals, you can actually create a team and a culture that's inspired, that's engaged, that's productive. Okay. So almost and uh, hopefully every organization, uh, every team, maybe all, also every individual have some kinds of goals, targets or, or a reason. Uh, they may have maybe planned projects and tasks that work towards those goals. And the OKR is one of the several goal setting frameworks. Uh, there are many others as well, uh, such as SMART, S M A R T. But um, what makes the OKR framework special? And what I actually love about OKRs is two things. It's transparency and it's working together. Um, OKRs help employees to see their individual and team level contributions and align, um, align them with team or organizational goals. So they provide this tra transparency into who is working what and help to ensure the accountability and responsibility that work is really getting done. So um, what's hidden, hidden behind this mystic acronym of OKR? So it stands for objectives and key results. OKRs are your organization targets as well as the metrics that tell you that, hey, you are, you are on the right path to meeting your goals. So objectives are what you want to achieve. And key results are how you're planning to achieving your objectives through benchmark and measurable indicators. So objectives, they should actually be ambitious and even that little bit of daring, like reaching goals. It's time to go big with objectives. Uh, still, objectives need to be something tangible, something that could be possible to realize. And key results. They are measurable, much word in here, milestones that are the evidence of completion of your objectives. Um, it's also important to know what key results are not. Key results are not activities. Key results are not projects or tasks. And they are also not your KPIs. Let's take a look at an example. OKRs, uh, they can be used in a organization level, a team level, individual 
and each level should always contribute contribute to the upper level goals. Uh, of course, the ultimate upper level being the organizational strategy. And objectives being something we want to achieve. They should be uh, collective, transparent goals that we are committed to meet as a team. It's a work for the whole team. And remember to think of the reach goals. Make them like a bit pompous, aim a little bit higher. For example, in here, your objective could be that you, you want to create the best customer advi advisory board experience. The best ever made. And key results are your measurable process indicators. For example, in here, you can have, you want to have 50 executives to participate in your meetings. You want to have uh, campaigns executed during the next quarter, or you want to reach a 90% satisfaction on your survey. You see, every key result has some kind of number or proof of execution. So, as you maybe said, as I said earlier, uh, key results are not tasks. And uh, it's, a, it's a common mistake to list activities as key results. But instead, the OKR framework has these key initiatives and projects, which include all the actual tasks that contribute to the objectives. So uh, key, initiatives, key initiatives can be those projects you have to do in order to achieve your goals. It can be, for example, creating materials, uh, creating and executing a sales plan, marketing process, whatever you need to get in there. And um, just a few tips on how to build great OKRs, because it's not that simple. For example, we, uh, our company, we have used OKRs for two and a half years now, and it's still, it's still a lot of process. It's very tough to think really measurable key results. So a few tips. Objectives, uh, they can be quarterly, uh, half year objectives, or even a year long goals, depending on, for example, what kind of organization you are, what kind of work you're doing. And the KRs inside the objective, they may have the same time, time perspective or shorter time, time perspective. And um, in, in my mind, it's easier to start with shorter goals. So maybe do quarterly objectives so that they stay fresh in everyone's mind. And it's easy to think of the rule of five. So you should have three to five objectives with three to five key results each. If you have more than five, you probably are not focused enough. And of course, OKRs are a team job. You need committed managers, you need OKR champions to drive the process in your organization. And you need to engage a whole team when you are creating those objectives and thinking of key results. Because if somewhere here, the co-creation makes miracles. And uh, remember not only to set and review your OKRs, but also you have to follow up on them regularly. But please note, this is actually very important. OKRs should never be linked to compensation discussions, or they, they should never be a substitute for perform, performance management discussions. An OKR review is not a salary review. And the thing is that when you are reviewing OKRs, they are these reach goals, they are hard to reach. And actually, when re reviewing those, 70% of that goal is a good result. You don't even have to get, have to do the whole objective. 70% is enough. 
if you are a perfectionist like me maybe a bit this might be hard uh, thing to to grasp but yeah okrs are purposefully uh difficult to achieve and why do we have to why, why do we want to use this difficult framework so first of course okrs drive alignment and they are a way to ensure that everyone in the company understands how their work affects on the team goals and the whole organization's strategic priorities. They also help the employees to align with the company's values and mission, actually. Things that usually they are just like words buried somewhere in the internet. But clear and common goals make working actually more productive and more efficient. And alignment is also linked to employee engagement. So when your team and the whole organization openly shares and follows up their goals and metrics, employees will see the impact between the work and the outcomes it has on the team or, or the whole organizational level. So by contributing to the OKRs, the employees are part of this ongoing and transport feedback cycle. And feedback actually is what keeps us going. Secondly, we have focus. And uh, as we, uh, as one of my tips, the best practice is to have three to five OKRs per quarter, maybe. And this supports the prioritization process and it helps everyone to stay focused. Actually, uh, Steve Jobs has said that choosing what to do is as important as choosing what not to focus on just now. To, sorry, I said that cho choosing what to do is as important and choose as choosing what not to focus on right now. So by having maximum of five OKRs, you will also like uh, avoid the trap of everything I do is important, so I can't prioritize anything. I have to do everything and then I'm just working 24 seven. Um, and why this matters is that, for example, according to the work trend index studies, or a little under half and a little over half of the managers are feeling, feeling overworked, are feeling burned out. So it's ever so important right now to prioritize our work. And of course, OKRs also bring a better agility to our decision making process. So if you regularly are following up the transfer progress of each key result, you're actually able to make these data driven, magic word, data driven decisions and readjust your focus if needed. Because we're, we're living in this like um, business environment where things can drastically change. Maybe not overnight, but maybe over a couple of weeks. And by tracking, revising and adapting, uh, we, we, if, we, if you use the OKRs, they allow us to have the flexibility to change direction or to maybe rearrange our priorities if we want to drive better business growth business results. Then we have purpose. So um, you maybe have heard me saying transparency quite many times already, and it really is the key in the whole OKR process. Visibility on those desired outcomes across the whole organization creates accountability, helps to build trust and fosters this collaboration inside and between teams and projects. Uh, as we saw a couple, couple of slides ago, so studies show that actually by using a goal setting framework leads to this higher employee engagement. Where people are feeling that their work matters and they have a purpose where they can participate 
in reaching these common goals in organization. And goals are sort of brought closer to today to the activities and inside the context of every one of their tasks. And last but not least, we have a growth. So the OKR framework encourages teams to set their OKRs aspirationally, having those reach goals that are like a bit fancier, maybe require a bit more, and um, they can even make you feel just a bit uncomfortable sometimes. But this is the important part of the process. If you have those aspirational goals, it helps employees to think outside of the box and it actually helps to achieve more than they maybe thought was even possible. So to continue setting, follow up and review process of the OKRs also support the organizational learning and growth. Reach goals helps the teams to be more creative, more inspired, and they foster this experimental culture. All super, super important things in modern organizations. So how does technology help us with this OKR framework? Well, of course, with Weaver goals. Um, Microsoft bought the OKR software Ally.io in 2021, and now it has been upgraded and a new branded new as part of the Viva Solution family as Viva Goals. And you can use Viva Goals as part of the Viva Suite, or of course you can bought it as a separate license. Every employee that uses Viva Goals has to have the license, but Viva Calls is for everyone in the organization. So I really would recommend uh, getting those licenses for at least every knowledge worker. And Weaver Goals actually brings the whole OKR process into the context of everyday work for every employee in Teams. And that's the beauty of it. The real magic happens when your goals, they, they aren't just like an, this Excel scorecard you check once a year, but they are an active part of your daily work. And the best Viva Goals is in Teams, but there is more, of course. Uh, there already are connectors available to, for example, uh, DevOps, Jira, uh, Trello, and many, many more. And in the future, you will actually be able to track the whole journey from a single task in Planner up to your organization's strategic goals. And that's like awesome. That's so much transparency there's ever been, ever, ever, never, ever been before. And um, the best part of Viva Goals is also that it actually guides you through the whole OKR process. And in the future as well, helps you by offering these reminders, approvals, and, and workflows. So even if you are new to the OKR framework, Viva Goals will help you to set those goals, review your goals, and actually see that they are getting done. Next. Okay, so if you are now a tiny, tiny bit of interested in OKRs, you have to get serious with the OKR framework. This is just a super, super small sort of presentation about the basics of OKRs, but there are many books, many videos, about how the framework works. I have some links in, in here in my presentation, and I will also uh, share them in the YouTube comments so you can actually click on them. Managers are a super important part of deploying OKRs in the organization, as well as, of course, Active Champions Network. So find those people, find those active engaged owners before even before you are starting to pilot this in some parts or in some teams in your organization. And it's a process. It takes time. It can take 
one year, even two years before the teams learn to uh, learn to process and know what kind of objectives and key results they need to set. But let Viva Goals help you with that. Let Viva Goals make the whole process transparent and bring those goals into the context of your work. So, a few resources. I found uh, some videos on YouTube, some blog posts, and of course, Viva Explorers will offer you so much more content about Viva in the future as well. So be sure to follow us in Twitter and everywhere else. But that's it about OKRs and a little bit of Viva Calls as well. I thank you for everyone for watching and happy holidays.